As we approach this final chapter of the F1 2023 season, it may seem like all is said and done and has been since round four of the season, but we expect that like us, you may be an individual of culture, of class, and not oblivious to the amazing storylines all reaching their boiling point. A fulcrum point is being reached for every team in the championship, so let's explore which way the level will flip in each scenario, because some of the ramifications of this final round could shape the future of the sport for better or for worse, and perhaps even for some teams teams proved to be a fatal blow in their championship aspirations moving forwards. Want to know what the teams will be praying for in this upcoming race week? Some will be requiring an act of God, whereas others have it all on themselves and could potentially fumble it. And stick around to the end, because one of these battles could prove to be fatal for multiple drivers and teams. There's an obvious one to start off with, but we'll save that for later, because there's a fight which has a far higher likelihood to cause some pretty serious fireworks both on and off track, and it even involves multiple teams and drivers. That being the ongoing battle between the late stampeding McLaren and the dwindling Aston Martin for fourth in the constructors. Aston Martin's strong showing last time out with a resplendent stroll bolstering comments surrounding his family's future at the team with an impressive P18 to P5 drive and an understated recovery drive from Alonso after a first lap spin to P9, partnered with McLaren failing to score meaningful points over the weekend due to misfortune and incidents. This battle is clearly one to keep an eye on for everyone however Aston Martin has been underplaying their chances for a P4 finish to steady the ship in preparation for next year, with team principal Mike Crack saying that they aren't even considering the fight with McLaren moving into the weekend, having this to say. For me, it doesn't change anything compared to two or three races ago. We can only influence what we do ourselves. The first bit is we have to have a fast car in Abu Dhabi because we are behind. So it's something that we are not on the defense. We have to go flat out and then we see. We have to do the best possible and then we will see what is the result. And it isn't just P4 and the constructors for the green team to be focusing on, but the drivers' championship makes for pretty interesting reading around the P4 spot too. With Sainz and Alonso equal on 200 points, but the late charging Lando Norris having a chance, and pole sitter at the last race, Charles Leclerc, needing a miracle but still in contention. When fighting on so many fronts, it's clear why Aston Martin are looking within for their aims this week, because if they are to peek outside of their garages, they'll find a Cerberus made up of a Brit, a Spaniard, and a Monegasque all chomping at the bits take the P4 spot away from them. Having secured non-controlling investments to bolster the team moving forwards, the pressure is off of the team for now off track, so getting the season done in the best way possible, with the P4 finish both on the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship being an incredible improvement on their standing at the end of the 2022 season, is a must for the team to move forward on the best footing possible. As for their Constructors' rivals McLaren, they'll be aiming to finish the season with strong momentum to start the next season where they left off, on the front foot, and with the initial initiative. Ferrari, however, have a fight beyond P4 and the Drivers' Championship to worry about. As great as it is to say the Driver X placed higher than Driver Y, the real focus for the teams is the championship where all the money is made, and that's the Constructors' Championship. Just four points separate the Scuderia in third and Mercedes in second, with the team hoping to use the momentum they've gained in the last few races to land a death blow on Mercedes' P2 aspirations. Team principal Fred Vasseur echoed this sentiment, clearly moving into the weekend with one intention in mind as he said, if you consider that we were 60 points behind them a couple of races ago, we are on a good path. But Abu Dhabi will be another story. Four points is nothing or a lot. And again, we were able to perform in Monza, in Singapore, in Mexico during this weekend on different tracks, with different weather conditions, different compounds, and we can be more than motivated before Abu Dhabi. The momentum is for us, and let's see what happens. Toto Wolff, meanwhile, demonstrated optimism, but also displayed an unbelievably glib delivery of his team shot at P2 in the Moneymaker Championship, as he said, it's all down to the last weekend. They are very quick, so they have done a good job. I think we could have been on par in the Las Vegas race, but the result shows something different, so let's race. To be honest, it's good to have P2 as a positive finish for the season, but P2, P3, for me, that doesn't make it better for me. Sure it doesn't, Toto. Sure it doesn't. We get it, it's P1 or nothing, but surely a dismissal of a final push when faced with a historic foe at a disadvantage is really not the encouragement your team needs to finish the season strong and in P2. For Ferrari and for Merck, the goal of Abu Dhabi is simple. Beat the other to the punch. A team that we don't often talk about other than for gags on this channel is Alpine, who aren't fighting for anything real in this last round due to their Formula bathtub not being good enough for anything more than 6th 
than the constructors. So why are we bringing them up here? Before the 2023 season, the anticipation for the battle within the French team between its drivers was palpable. Everyone was anticipating fireworks with the team downplaying this at every turn, trying to play off that it was all behind them and it's all buddy-buddy within the Enstone outfit. However, after recent weekends, it's become clear the tensions have been steadily rising across the season, with frustrated radio messages becoming more and more prevalent at the back end of the season, culminating with Gasly proclaiming that the car was embarrassing and frustration being clear across both drivers. The frustration hasn't been limited to the car, however, with Gasly's mate, what the f you're kidding me. I was faster. I'm on fresher rubber. If he didn't let me pass, I would have overtaken him anyway rant at the Japanese Grand Prix being a clear demonstration of the vitriol that still exists between the drivers when the helmets get pulled on. With their all-star team of celebrity investors coming in, when partnered with the frustration evident across both the drivers and the stuck-in-the-mud nature of the team, it would appear that the way that the team finishes the season could be make or break for them moving forward, but not necessarily due to their championship implications, but the emotional well-being and attitude of the team. A strong finish will put investors at ease and allow the team breathing room to re set for next year. If they have another embarrassing display at Abu Dhabi, however, I'd be heavily concerned about Alpine's long-term existence within the sport, with Renault being flippant at best during their on-off tenure at the top seat of motorsport. Finally, and in our opinion most importantly, is the battle for 7th in the Constructors. Now I know what you're thinking, 7th is irrelevant, why even bother talking about this? Well, it really isn't, and this is incredibly important when looking at the landscape of the sport moving forwards. Each team has their own names, and I think it's best if we look through them one at a time. Starting with AlphaTauri, the team CEO, Peter Bayer, has announced that the team's name will be changing to a classic name, which has been decided by the team and its partners, but also implied that the team has been relying heavily on the star power of Ricardo and his popularity within the American audiences to secure new sponsors, saying, we are on the right track, and because we are so well received in the USA, we have found these two companies that like each other. We had a very, very good meeting with these two great new partners. They got along really well. They worked together immediately. They'll be hoping for a strong end to the season to secure further sponsorship, and if the team is bought out as early as next year, something that's been rumoured on and off throughout the season, they'll be looking to secure the best investment possible, which finishing P7 will move them far closer to. Next is Williams, but more precisely Logan Sargent. After a strong showing earlier on in the weekend, Sargent fell back into mediocrity across the Las Vegas race weekend, but something that really took us off guard was Williams' race recap post. There was almost no mention of Sargent at all, only mentioning him in relation to a fan forum, with number one driver Alex Albon being the main focus. While this isn't too insidious on its own, the featured spotlight put on Williams Academy driver Luke Browning for his impressive Macau Grand Prix, as well as Williams potentially eyeing up Mercedes Academy driver and runner-up in an incredibly close F2 season Frederick Vesti, Sargent will no doubt be driving for his future, as up until now, he has not been selected by Williams to be a part of their 2024 drivers lineup. Talk about leaving it late, eh? For Sauber, or Alfa Romeo, their current replacements Audi are not having the best time of it in their preparations for their takeover, with engine development being a key area of concern and the insiders at the team clearly pushing for further funding, a higher finish in the constructors, and thus the millions of dollars that will come with it could prove pivotal to their future and could dictate whether Audi start their time in F1 on their feet or crawling. And last, funnily enough, is Haas. They'll just be trying not to prop up the rest of the championship, especially with Andretti looking to get approval from the teams to enter the sport at the moment. The team's ongoing existence in F1 is shaky as it is, but if the worries of another team entering the sport due to the threat it could bring to their existence is of true concern, then finishing yet another year at the bottom of the pile, securing the runt of the funding, could prove to be fatal to their long-term survival within the fastest sport in the world.